Hello everyone. Um, I said I wasn't going to do a video again for a while. I guess I lied to you. My bad. Uh, but I thought that this would be interesting, something to do, which I haven't done before, nor have I really seen done before um, on YouTube at least, is kind of give a book review on YouTube of something I've read. Um, last year, 2011, I read 190 books, um, more or less. That's about a book every couple days. And while some of that was a little backtrack from maybe the late part of 2010, um, the software which I used to organize it kind of spit out that number. So, But I think what's more accurate is probably about 150 books. Um, so I'm definitely constantly reading whether um, I am, I mean, in the videos I post, like the last one, I think I showed you a few anyway. Um, and then whether I'm like in the car or I have audiobooks I'm listening to. So I'm pretty much like reading mostly, I don't know, maybe for like four hours out of the day or something. Um, and so this year, like, I plan to read, like, 100, 150 books again, um, and it's kind of a nice way to just accumulate, like, I don't know, <laughs> massive amounts of information, so you're kind of, like, ready for any, uh, scenario possible whenever you encounter, you know, whatever it is you, you do when you live your life, but, um, could be a useful skill, I don't know, have you ever seen, uh, that film, uh, with Robert Redford, Three Days with the Condor, I think? Uh, his character actually works for the CIA, and the guy does nothing but read books. Um, but then, like, he's not trained in, like, hand-to-hand -hand combat or, like, fought with firearms or anything. Um, but because of, like, his constant, like, reading, you know, his, he's doing that for his job, uh, when he gets into scenarios where he needs to get stuff done, <laughs> like whether it's to do with electronics or maybe hacking or something. Um, because of that knowledge, he's actually able to kind of somewhat survive. He's not a professional by any means, but he has a general know-how too. So I always say that's a great movie if, <laughs> to watch uh, if you don't think reading books is useful. Anyway, um, this one is called One Taste by Ken Wilber. Uh, I referenced this guy before. He is an American philosopher. Um, see my videos lagging here so maybe you can catch that um, it's called one taste uh, Ken Wilber is a developer of integral theory and um, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really want to give an outline of that on, on this video because it's late in the morning and I'll stumble over myself but generally one taste is a collection of kind of like diary entries this guy did in the 90s um, and so it's a real good like subjective glimpse you know into like who this guy was in that time. Um, and for someone who kind of writes about um, looking at things from different perspectives, whether it's, you know, your subjective interior or like an objective third person like science or like a second person, first person kind of like dialogue, um, it's good to kind of get a sense of, well, what's this guy's interior like? What's this guy's subjective kind of thoughts like? And, and so that's kind of like what this book provides. So, um, this is a really crude and horrible method of reviewing a book, uh, but as I read, I always, um, when I come across something that I might want to look up or reference later, or maybe just something I think is really interesting, um, I'll go ahead and I'll, <coughs> see, see, I'll do this, you know, dog here with the page, and then I'll highlight, you know, whatever it is I have, and so if you can see the spine, let me try and get that for you, you can see kind of how many pages are dog eared and, um, uh, so in the future, you know, like when I, I'm writing a paper for school or for whatever, and I'm thinking, and then, you know, okay, I'm writing a paper, and I'm like, oh, in that book, One Taste, there's something mentioned about perennial philosophy. I want to go, you know, go back to that because I think I can use it for what I'm working on now. And so I'll pull it off my bookshelf, which I'm not going to show you because my laptop, um, if I unplug it, it'll die. Uh, take it off my bookshelf, and then I'll, you know, kind of spend a few minutes flipping through, finding the section, and then I'll read it, and then research it further, and then write that included in my paper. So, anyway, what I was going to do, if it's useful, not go through maybe the whole thing, but go through a few of these and kind of give some running commentary. Um, there were some things I definitely didn't want to talk about, um, but I don't necessarily remember and can collect them into this video. So, What's the limit on YouTube? Like 15 minutes now, I think, hopefully. Let's try to get something done in 10 minutes um, from now, and then I'll kind of put us at a cutoff point. So, um, Okay, here's a quote. This is a quote by William James. 
Our normal waking consciousness is but one special type of consciousness. While all about it, parted from it by the filmiest of screens, there lie potential forms of consciousness entirely different. We may go through life without suspecting their existence, but apply the requisite stimulus, and at a touch they are there in all their completeness. There is a continuum of cosmic consciousness against which our individuality binds, or excuse me, builds, but accidental fences and into which our several minds plunge as into a sea, mother sea, or reservoir. No account of the universe in its totality can be final, which leaves these other forms of consciousness quite disregarded. William James, um, American psychologist, kind of, I guess, referred to as a father of psychology. I don't know who refers to him as that, but that's what I've heard. Um, yeah, I mean, this guy is basically saying that we spend our lives kind of like plunged into this, you know, waking state, and this is where we are, and this is what we remember, and this is kind of, this waking state is how we operate uh, in our life. This is how we operate most of our lives, and, and so we don't really pay attention to um, necessarily uh, different states of consciousness that are available to us, um, like, you know, the dream state or something like that, um, or different states you can enter into through meditation or um, contemplation or something. And... Um, as William Jane says, there we have access to all of these, you know, kind of like right now, but we don't necessarily uh, use or take advantage of getting there or just paying attention. Um, I think it's kind of widely regarded that uh, the dream state um, kind of resembles what's kind of like flowing around in your subconscious, um, which are kind of like pieces of your psyche that you know, have broken off from you and you haven't kind of like you disidentify yourself with that, with those parts of yourself and you have need to kind of like reattach them to your uh, awareness and so like dream analysis or something or even psychotherapy would be a process to kind of build all that back together so um, I guess Ken Wilber used this saying hey look this American philosopher he agrees that there's different states of consciousness so I'm gonna put that <laughs> as kind of like an epigraph before his chapter um, and as you can see, the book is organized kind of like, it's just, it's really the diary entries, as I said. So there it says Monday, March 3rd. Uh, I guess New York is not Boulder. New York is in New York and Boulder is in Colorado. But um, yeah, okay, it says on the plane back to Boulder. That's from New York. So anyway, um, okay, so Ken Wilber has this thing called the Great Spectrum. And it's like the spectrum of consciousness and he kind of outlines like what all this stuff is. Um, a lot of it is internal, kind of like subjective, and so a lot of people, like scientists who are focused in the objective or kind of third person area, kind of have a little difficulty, including myself, kind of stumble around like what exactly this guy's talking about. So he says, the evidence for this great spectrum is grounded at every point in direct experience. That's subjective, but it's first hand experience. Um, direct experience that can be confirmed or rejected by any who adequately follow the interior experiments in consciousness. I think when he says interior experiments, he means stuff like meditation and contemplation. These experiments, yeah, well, never mind. <laughs> These experiments, generally known as meditation or contemplation, cannot be dismissed on the ground that they are merely subjective or interior apprehensions. After all, mathematics is merely subjective and interior, but we don't dismiss that as unreal or illusory or meaningless. Just so, the contemplative sciences have amassed an extraordinary amount of phenomenal. Okay, sorry, this word phenomenological yeah, data, phenomenology is like, I think it's study of interior, but whatever, uh, direct experiences relating to the subtle and causal or soul and spirit levels. Okay, and if you want to know if this data is real, all you have to do is follow the experiment, like meditation, and see for yourself. I kind of have a huge problem with this because I think um, a couple years ago on this channel, uh, I posted like maybe two or three videos about religion. Um, and in there, I kind of make the argument that uh, a human being, a human being, in his perceptions and in his everyday life, uh, what he can see and what he can understand and comprehend is severely limited because senses of a human are limited. Um, the comprehension ability. I mean, we have we have brains that are kind of <laughs> limited, contained within our heads. We can't see through walls. We can't. Uh, we don't have any of these kind of like abilities that ascend, extend our senses. We can't hear from 100 miles away, etc. And also, um, other animals like dolphins and bats have uh, perceptions that we would never even kind of 
know what it's like to have like sonar or whatever. And so if we're limited in our perspectives of the world, how can we make absolute statements like this is the way this is or there is a whatever um, if we don't have all the information? And so what can, when, Kel when Ken Wilber says, look, like I can have an awareness in waking state, like hopefully we all do, an awareness in the dream state, uh, an awareness in deep dreamless sleep where he kind of has this like we are all one kind of feeling, um, or an awareness like that in meditation and like subtle realms. He is saying like do the experiment, so meditate, and you will get these same results just like I'm getting. So it's kind of like uh, trying to quantify stuff in the interior subjective planes of our thoughts, which is a little fringe, and I think that's why uh, a lot of people are turned off by Ken Wilber. And, but I mean, this guy, I think he genuinely believes um, that there are things in the subjective state of mind that can be objectified if everyone performs the same practice. I guess I would liken that to um, everyone take this amphetamine and we're all going to get the same experience of being hyped up, generally. Of course, people who are physiologically different than others and they take amphetamines, they may not necessarily feel hyped up or um, have an accelerated heartbeat or whatever. They actually might feel more focused and you know so on and so forth. That of course being a remedy for attention deficit disorder. So um, I don't know. I, if someone else has a comment on that, I like to hear it because that's kind of like the basis for everything. Like someone like me would say, hold on a second. Just you can't necessarily objectify the subjective realm. Ken Wilber says, no big deal. Everyone do this practice. You're all going to get the same results. Uh, unfortunately, the meditation required um, is kind of like a long-term commitment. <laughs> it's not something you can do uh, in a few months and be like, cool. Although there are claims that transcendental meditation, you can kind of get an experience like that within a few hours, I think. But um, just look that up and decide if you want to spend the thousand bucks to be taught by someone uh, with TM. But anyway, <sighs> moving on. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. Um, let me see here. Okay. Um, Sunday, March 9. It's taken almost a week for any sort of meditative awareness to return, including lucid dreaming. Again, Ken Wilber identifies three uh, states. I'm, well, I'm probably misusing his lingo, but he identifies these kind of three states that we enter into. Um, wait, the waking state, dream state, and then deep dreamless sleep. So he can hold an awareness, so he says, um, of something while he's awake, like we all do, while he's dreaming, so he has lucid dreams, and then while he is in deep dreamless sleep, and he kind of feels just kind of this oneness, this undescribable kind of feeling because it is non-dual. You can't use language um, that is partial uh, and relative to describe a non-relative absolute state. So anyway, um, he was saying, which I thought was interesting, that when he was in New York, he was promoting his book, um, not this one, but a different one. I think it ended up being called The Merits of Sense and Soul, or Science and Religion, or something. Um, while he was kind of like wrapped up in that, oh, I'm writing a book, I'm, you know, with a publisher now, and, and I'm, you know, he's gotten this I, 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 kind of ego building stuff. Also, he says the, these abilities to hold awareness 24 7, so a week can go by and he never becomes unconscious in his sleep state or anything. He holds an awareness the entire time. He says that alcohol, specifically wine, kind of deflates that. Um, anyway, he describes this, or in summary, he says, in other words, you have just taken a tour of the great chain of being. Gross body to subtle mind to causal spirit. Gross body being this, what we're seeing here. Subtle mind being kind of like the dream state, and causal spirit being the deep dreamless state. Um, as you fall asleep, you pass from gross body, waking, to subtle mind, dreaming, to causal emptiness, deep sleep. That's evolution or ascent. And then as you awaken, you move down from causal to subtle to gross. That's involution or descent. The actual order of states can vary, but the entire cycle is generally present. I'm going to stop this, so I guess I'm making it part two.